folks, uh, today's session of the Minnesota Center Agriculture Broadband and Rural Development Committee for Wednesday, March 20th, 2024 is now in session. Folks, we've got two things to do today. First will be Senator Westrom's uh, Senate file 4152. Uh, and then second will be, I will be presenting the Omnibus Agriculture Policy Bill. Uh, Senator Westrom, if you would, please, uh, when you are ready, uh, commence your testimony and present your bill for us, please. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chair, oh, this one's closer. Mr. Chair, um, members, uh, I would uh, move this bill. Um, and Mr. Chair, I, before I uh, explain it, I guess I think it'd be best if I just get an amendment added to it to uh, uh, tar target, target the bill more specifically and narrow it to, to what I want to talk about. Certainly, Senator Westrom. So, Senator Westrom moves the A1 amendment. Would you like to describe that amendment just briefly? So, if you could? Mr. Chair, uh, members, the A1 amendment um, mimics current state law that was passed a few years ago, uh, allowing the uh, Hempker Zoo, ultimately the uh, the one private zoo we have in the state of Minnesota uh, that meets this criteria, a uh, very, uh, I guess high standard or good standard uh, that, that we worked out language a few years ago that dealt with making sure uh, they could uh, have animals and uh, monkeys and uh, some breeding diversity with their uh, uh, animals that they show to the public and uh, of course house in some cases for other zoos across the country and uh, they're in a very robust uh, uh, arrangement with, with other zoos that they, they, they work back and forth uh, that are AZA qualified or, or cert, uh, uh, certified. And, and so that's where this language came from, uh, uh, narrowly uh, fitting the situation that we are trying to work with. Uh, and last year, in uh, one of the bills dealing with the CWD and the white-tailed deer, uh, but Cervidae uh, caught them in a situation where they're not able to work with uh, bringing in some genetic diversity uh, and trading and working with reindeer, uh, a member of the servant class, not a white-tailed deer, but, uh, and so this language would just uh, narrowly tailor the bill to just dealing with the issue that we're ultimately trying to work out and it would ultimately give them the same exemption that other zoos like Como Park or Minnesota Zoo, uh, Como Zoo or, or Minnesota Zoo have in the state of Minnesota. And so that's, this, this amendment narrows it down very much so similar to what was in current law or the same as what was in current law. And that's, that's where we came up with this amendment. So uh, I'll, I can talk more about it. Uh, I know it's uh, improved the concern or the opposition by some to uh, not be opposed anymore or be neutral. And so um, I'd, I'd urge us to get the amendment on and then we can narrow the discussion to, to just this uh, language, amended language. Thank you, Senator Westrom. Uh, so uh, members, we have before us the uh, A1 amendment. I hope we've all had a chance to take a quick look at it. Um, do we have any discussion on the A1 amendment, members? Seeing none, the A1 amendment, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The A1 amendment is adopted. Senator Westrom to the underlying bill. So, Mr. Chair and members, uh, to the bill and to the bill as amended, uh, to repeat a little bit of what I've, I've already said or mentioned, uh, but that's the purpose of this bill is to uh, try to help uh, a zoo in my district in central Minnesota, uh, just outside of the city of Freeport, right off of I-94, uh, to give you just a geographic reference of where this uh, zoo is, just west of St. Cloud. Uh, they've been in business uh, for quite some time, a family family uh, business. Uh, Ms. Joan Hemker will uh, testify here shortly uh, to you to talk to you about the, the need and why uh, this exemption or exception, uh, similar to what the other zoos in Minnesota already have, uh, and it is narrowly tailored so they can work with getting reindeer in from uh, state of Washington uh, to help bring in uh, uh, genetic diversity into their zoo uh, and, and, and uh, some of their uh, 
uh, animals that they have on display uh, at their zoo here in Minnesota. Of course, uh, being concerned about uh, making sure they uh, carry out high standards like they do and uh, other zoos do in our state. And so, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, I would uh, open it up to uh, Ms. Hemker to uh, testify, and then if there's more questions, I'd be happy to answer. Thank you, Senator Wester. Ms. Hemker, uh, if you're there, could you please uh, uh, unmute your microphone, turn on your camera, state your full name for the record, and tell us uh, what you got to say, please. Good afternoon, Chair Putnam and committee members. I am Joan Hemker, the founder and owner of Hemker Park and Zoo, and I am here today in support of Minnesota Senate File 4152, an amendment for, to the Farm Survey Day Bill. Uh, our mission at Hemker Park and Zoo is to promote animal species while advocating for envi environmental conservation through collaborative partnership and practical wildlife management strategies. We have cared for reindeer for over 35 years, and we hope that this exemption will allow us to continue safeguarding these animals through genetic diversity while educating our communities on the importance of them and worldwide. We are one of the three zoological facilities in Minnesota to have reindeer, a subspecies of, California, of caribou. And it is crucial that we are able to continue to work with reindeer that we have been a, that have been a part of Hempkirt Park and Zoo's foundation from the beginning. It is our hope that we can bring new reindeer in from an accredited zoo's facility to continue our responsible herd management and population. Reindeer are exceptional creatures, not just because they are Santa's preferred animals, but also due to their remarkable characteristics that help them thrive in their environment. Some of these traits include reindeer are unique because they only they have two layers of coats for insulation because of their harsh winters. Unlike most species, reindeer calves are born with, without spots, and both the male and female reindeer grow antlers, setting them apart from other deer species. Hemker Park and Zoo houses over 45 animals from 25 different AZA institutions right here in Minnesota. For every animal we house at our facility from an AZA institution, we go through an extremely rigorous inspection with them on and on-site inspecting our husbandry policies, the exhibits, daily care, veterinary care program, animal standards, with the emphasis that it focuses on staff and animal and public safety. We have met and exceeded over 25 AZA institution inspections. In addition, one of our co-workers of Hemker Park and Zoo is a member of AZA. We are also involved in numerous breeding programs to minimize genetic diversity, ensure, ensuring the preservation of these animals for future generations. Affording AZA accreditation institutions and not USDA licensed exhibitors of regulated animals, the house, the house that house animals owned by institutions accredited by AZA and participates in the AZA species survival program is truly unjust. While excluding the above entities who follow those requirements, it is also problematic from a legal perspective. The Equal Protection Clause of the United States Constitution requires state governmental bodies to treat an individual in the same manner as others in similar conditions and circumstances. Singling out USDA licensed zoos that house animals owned by AZA facilities and work with an SSP program for more restrictive treatment could violate those zoos' right to be equally protected under the law. And from an animal welfare and public safety perspective has no rational basis. As the current exemption allows zoological facilities to import Cervidae into the state. As a women-owned business based in Minnesota, our goal is to advocate for equality, similar to the acknowledgement of AZA entity would receive. 
our plea is not to bring in white-tailed deer into Minnesota, but to continue our work with reindeer and genetic diversity. Hember Hemker Park and Zoo fully supports and urges the amendment. <clears throat> I am available for any questions regarding this matter after. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Hemker. Um, uh, Senator Weston, you, you have no further testifiers. Is that accurate? I, I do not, uh, Mr. Okay. Mr. Chair. So just for the sake of clarity for, for members, members, when you look in your, your packet, there's a great deal of information about uh, some difficulties with the Zoological Association of America. Um, that is no longer part of this bill, as I understand it, thanks to the amendment from Senator Westrom, so that the right. information is no longer immediately germane or relevant to our discussion today. Is that accurate, Senator Westrom? That, that would be accurate, Mr. Chair. Okay. Uh, that's, that's what we narrowed down with this amendment. Okay. Uh, thank you, Senator Westrom. Uh, I, I know we do have a pal here from DNR, uh, our good friend, uh, Mr. Myers, if you wouldn't mind coming up and having a seat with us. Could you state your full name for the record? Tell us a little bit about how you feel about reindeer. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, members, for the record, Bob Meyer, Assistant Commissioner, Department of Natural Resources. Reindeers are great. Reindeer are great animals, so <laughs> I appreciate them in our in our ecosystems. I do. We do have some. We had some concerns with the bill as it's drafted, but now I have a question. Actually, as we're striking the words Zoological Association of America, and you'll see the bill does allow. It does not apply to the interstate transfer of animals between two facilities accredited by the A Association of Zoos and Aquariums on lines 1.17 to 1.18. So if that's the case, this would be allowed if it's from a zoo that, to zoo that are both accredited. So I need to, to dive into this amendment more. Uh, we do have some concerns and, and want to make sure that if we are allowing importation of cervids from one place to the other, that it's done responsibly. And we understand the concerns of this zoo and other small zoos like that. So uh, while we try to figure out the amendment, we want to work with Senator Westrom and your committee to come up with a path forward that allows protection, but also allow the genetic diversification that they're looking for in their herd, similar to what we're looking for in our elk herd, actually. So we understand that completely, and we want to work with you all to try to come up with something that we can support. Thank you, Mr. Meyer. I appreciate that. Um, members, do we have any questions or comments or concerns uh, about Senate File 4152? Senator Gustafson, please. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you, Senator Westrom. I just, I, I got to be honest, I'm a little confused. So I just had a couple of questions, if that's okay, about the bill. So this would mean that if you are, um, I want to get it right so I don't mess up the two, ZZA or ZAA, you would be able then to, if this bill were to go forward, you would be able to import reindeer into your facility. Senator Westrom. Uh, Mr. Chair, Senator Gustafson, yes, as long as they meet this, uh, the, these tests that are set out, the criteria which they, they currently engage in and, and participate in. And so that's, that's what makes this zoo uh, uniquely positioned for this because of their close alignment and, and working together with AZA accredited facilities who have to come and inspect their zoo when they bring AZA animals in to house or to trade uh, uh, for, for a variety of reasons, and, and a lot of times it's for breeding stock. Senator Westrom, if I, if, if I may, uh, to, uh, for, for my own following along with this, my, uh, Senator Gustin, you asked the question about the ZAA or the AZA? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I, I don't know. I, I think, this, uh, I mean, I'm looking at all of these things and I have like some real concerns about the ZAA. And then I saw the amendment and I don't know when the amendment came in. And then you said that that negated some of this. So now I'm trying to like figure out what the bill does um, because I want to make sure that you know, like that this is responsible and and I really really want to appreciate uh, Joan Hemker the testifier um, it sounds like her particular zoo is run very well I really appreciated that she has over 25 AZA institution inspections and or that, that have met or exceeded um, that one of the co-owners is a member of AZA I think that that's great um, I just had a lot of concerns about ZAA and now I'm sort of wondering how they um, function within this bill from now with the amendment in place. So, 
So, Mr. Uh, Chair, Senator Westrom. Mr. Chair, Senator Gustafson, uh, th that's, that's certainly a bigger discussion, but now for a different day, if, 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 if you will. Uh, and that's the idea behind the amendment. Um, I mean, the, 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 there, is, there is other reasons why uh, the zoo would like to and the ZAA and the AZA, who are kind of two different organizations in some cases, competing. It's really an issue we don't need to, don't want to solve today. It would take a lot of time and discussion to figure out who's better, if you will, quote unquote, and or, or not, or maybe they're both just as good as each other. But for the purposes of the the, the Hempker Zoo in my district and the one, the only one in Minnesota, this amendment mimics what was able to be passed a few years ago and resolve the issue that they were facing with monkeys and bringing in different monkeys and, and some of the regulation that ultimately the Department of Ag oversees uh, these, the, these, these entities uh, through their statutory regulation. And so we're just setting, so rather than discussing ZAA and AZA and who's better, who's worse, what's, what's the difference, um, it's just not. It's just not a battle that we have time for, and it ultimately doesn't seem to be necessarily a, a fruitful battle of, or, or make a difference. Um, in this case, as long as they meet this criteria that was set forth in the amendment, uh, it it allows them to be able to have the same exemption that uh, the Como Zoo or the other zoos in Minnesota already do have based on the white-tailed deer uh, uh, CWD ban that was put in place but last year, but that, that ban did, did offer the exception for those zoos, but, but this zoo did not get covered even though they had this similar language in place. Uh, the later passage of the CWD bill last year kind of stepped over that exemption from two years ago. And so in hindsight, that's what the original bill should have probably said in the first place, but we were working on it, trying to figure out where, where this issue came forward. And, and again, it's just, it is a bigger issue for another day, but it's not the issue we want to litigate or flush out in, in our timeline today, nor, nor do I think it would be that fruitful um, to, to decide who's, who's better or who's not. Um, it, it's a zoo I've been to. I, others I know probably have been there, but, but it's... Um, it's what has worked in the past, and so that's why we wanted to just revert back to what, what we did work out a few years ago and, and was, uh, did, did work. Senator Westrom, if I may, I I'm, thought I had this sussed out, but I'm slowly moving into Camp Gustafson of confusion. Um, my understanding as I read this is that we are no longer talking about the ZAA at all any longer. And that's, I think, a productive direction to go because uh, for no other reason, the materials that we received make fairly clear that that is a potentially much lesser uh, accrediting organization. And so what I read in your amendment is not we'll work on whether or not the ZAA is viable at some point. It's no, we're going to go with this stricter organization, the AZA, and that that's the path forward. Is, is that not what we're doing here? Uh, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Chair, we, we, we are in the sense that we're referencing the AZA and the housing, the, the standards that they have to meet to house those AZA animals already. And if they weren't doing that, then they wouldn't meet the criteria in this language and wouldn't be meeting the standard that, uh, the higher standard that, that, that people would want to see. And so does that help clear it up? But, but the ZAA is just not any part of the contemplation anymore. There we go. That's what I was looking for. Yep. <laughs> Thanks, Senator Westrom. <laughs> Senator Gustafson, then I apologize for co-opting your uh, line of questioning. Senator Kunish. Thank you. And, and that helped clear up my confusion as well, um, Chair and, and Senator Westland. So um, if you would just go back, you said that a couple years ago <clears throat> when we were talking about um, <clears throat> Cervidae and um, that this zoo was not exempted then. Um, 
why was it not included when they worked all of this out a couple of years ago? Uh, Senator Western. Mr. Chair, uh, Senator Kunish, I don't know that I can give you a for sure answer. I have talked to Chair Her actually earlier today just to mention that about this issue. Uh, he, he doesn't recall any reason why it wouldn't have been other than my best explanation probably is it, it wasn't thought of at the time and just the, the broad language that passed in the legislature uh, passed fairly, you know, fairly quickly in the sense of three, two, three, four months in one session and it just wasn't, wasn't caught or looked at at the time. Mm -hmm. And so I, that's, that's the best I can think of as I was looking back at this because when I first heard of this issue a few months back, it took me a while to figure out well, why, what, what is now the problem that we can't allow reindeer uh, to be exchanged for, for genetic diversity. And, and as I've worked through this with staff, that seems to be the best explanation that I can see. And that's why we're just trying to keep it very narrow to the same exemption language that we had worked through a few years ago. I don't know if Ms. Painter has any additional points to that or not. She can add if she does it. She doesn't have to if, if there's nothing more. But does that help, Senator Kunish? Well, Ms. Painter um, might have an opinion, then we'll go to Senator Kunish if that's okay. Ms. Painter? Mr. Chair and Senator Kunish, when, when this, the language was added in 2022, it was amending the regulated animals section of the statutes, which is in Chapter 346. This is moving it to the servants section in Chapter 35. Senator Kunish. So uh, for uh, Ms. Painter, so was, was this not even considered in 2002? Was that not part of the conversation? Ms. Painter. Mr. Chair, Senator Kunish, it was not part of the conversation at that time. The conversation was about monkeys, okay. not reindeer. Thank you. I do have a, another question for the Senator. <laughs> Senator Kunish. <laughs> Senator Wesson, you bring really good bills to this committee, <laughs> really interesting. Then my other question is, if you um, are deciding not to include ZAA accreditation, then the only accreditation that would be necessary for these reindeer to be brought in would that be the Association of Zoos and Aquariums, AZA? That's my question. Um, Senator Western. Mr. Chair, Senator Kunish, I'm not 100% sure I'm following your question. Um, but I, I, I don't want to, I don't want to uh, mislead in this. The, the, the Hempker Zoo will not be necessarily an AZA accredited. They are ZAA accredited, but they are uh, inspected by AZA um, accreditors or, or representatives because they do have an active program exchanging and housing animals from the AZA. Uh, and so that's what we're referencing in this amendment language, that they have to have that uh, intense or um, uh, heightened program in place in order for them to be uh, qualified to, for this exemption. Does that help, Senator Kunish? Yeah, a little bit, but I do have a, a question. So who has to accredit um, the, the zoo to bring in reindeer? So are there other organizations that the Hempker Park and Zoo uses for accreditation for any and all of their animals. There must be, you know, like an umbrella group that, that in, does the inspections. You said ZAA does that, but are there any, or AZA does that? Um, who, who is responsible for the overall inspection of these, of a zoo such as this? Um, Senator Westrom. Mr. Chair, I'm, I'm gonna maybe ask Ms. Hemker to, uh, offer some insight to uh, Senator Kunish's answer because she could maybe give a, a clearer answer than what I could. Ms. Hemker? Hi. Um, we, are, we have a USDA license 
an exhibitor license. So we are accredited in that form. We also work with the AZA zoos um, and we belong to the SSP programs, the species survival programs. So in order to house those animals, we go through a very rigorous inspection and um, to be able to house them and we have to do a vendor profile. We have to explain, you know, we have to send pictures of, of the pens or, or you know, what our plans are with these animals. So they, these AZA zoos do inspect us before they allow us to take any of their animals or house them at our zoo. And um, we have one of our owners is a member of the AZA organization. We are not accredited through them, but we um, are a member of the AZA organization. Does that help? Yes, thank you very much. That is very helpful. I don't have any more questions right now. Senator Gustafson. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, Senator Western, one more, and this is maybe just a comment. I want to, again, just thank um, the Hempker Park and Zoo for their, it, it seems like their commitment to doing things the right way. And I think it's great what they have. And I think what they're asking for is, is good. My I guess my concern is that this would change it statewide. And I'm a little bit concerned if they're not licensed by AZA um, or, you know, like, again, I know that the Hempker Zoo, from what I understand, we've talked it thoroughly, ZAA versus ACA, but what I'm afraid of is that not everybody might operate a zoo as well as the Hempker Park and Zoo, and if we don't have some of those guardrails on there, might it be a little bit risky to take this jump, especially if it's, you know, if, if we're still, if, as we're still working through uh, the partnership with DNR and other stakeholders, um, you know, maybe it's not quite ready yet. That's just my concern. Uh, to, that, to that end, uh, unless Senator Westrom, if you'd like to respond to Senator Gustafson's question, you're welcome to. Um, but we do have another testifier that I'd like to pull up as well to get a little bit more perspective on this. If Ms. Fritz would please come to the table. Um, if you could state your full name for the record and tell us what you've got to share, please. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair, members of the committee. My name's uh, Jill Fritz. I'm a senior director for wildlife protection at the Humane Society of the United States. And um, just as uh, quickly as background, Minnesota law restricts the importation of cervids uh, to protect the state's population from chronic wasting disease, or CWD. And the law has an exemption currently for interstate transfer of cervids between facilities accredited by the respected Association of Zoos and Aquariums, and that's because um, they have knowledgeable and experienced professionals caring for animals in, in modern facilities. And, and the bill, as introduced, had an exemption for another entity with a similar sounding name, as, as we've heard here, the Zoological Association of America. And that one has a troubled history, as you've seen in the materials of accrediting roadside zoos and private menageries with records of dangerous incidents, violations of the Federal Animal Welfare Act and financial instability. Um, but because of uh, this, we, we do thank the committee for adopting the A1 amendment um, that removes the exemption for ZAA. However, chronic wasting disease is fatal to animals and there are no treatments and no vaccines. So uh, because the adopted amendment does still weaken existing restrictions somewhat, uh, we are going to defer to the Minnesota DNR on uh, what they consider to be an acceptable risk uh, for controlling the spread of this disease in the state. But that's it. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Ms. Fritz. Mm -hmm. Members, any other questions or comments for uh, either the bill's author or testifiers? Uh, Senator Westrom, you have any? Oh, Senator Anderson. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Senator Westrom, uh, it's mentioned, or I think Ms. Hamker mentioned that there are other zoos similar to hers in the state of Minnesota. Do you know what those other two or three, are, other than Ms. Hamker's uh, zoos are? Um, Senator Westrom. Mr. Chair, uh, Senator Anderson, uh, two of them I know offhand are the Minnesota Zoo and the Como Zoo. And I believe the third one is a zoo in Duluth, 
the Duluth area, but I'd ask Ms. Hemker if she can uh, add, I believe there's three currently. Uh, Ms. Hemker, are you aware? It is, um, it is the Duluth Zoo. Thank you, Ms. Hemker. Senator Anderson. Thank you. So uh, I'm guessing that the Como Zoo, the Minnesota Zoo, and the Duluth Zoo that would have, uh, are being overseen by the uh, American Zoo and Aquarium Association. If uh, otherwise, uh, I mean, that's a higher standard that from what I hear Ms. Emker say that they're being looked at. And with this amendment on there, I would think that that would give more credibility to Ms. Hemker and others who are uh, in a situation of having a, a zoo. So uh, I'm glad that you went to a higher standard with the uh, guidelines coming from the American Zoo and Aquarium Association. Okay. Senator Westrom. Thank you. And, and Mr. Chair, thank you, Senator Anderson. And, and uh, I've, I've gotten to know a lot more about zoos than, than I would have originally just uh, traveling to zoos uh, back in my days of school and with, with my children uh, in the past years. Uh, but, it, but it's very intriguing when you get some of the behind the scenes um, uh, nitty gritty of how, how these zoos and businesses work and survive. And uh, I, don't, I don't know that I'm at liberty to go into it, but it's uh, some very well-known zoos in the country uh, that if I were to tell you, I mean, some of the animals that they trade with are from big zoos uh, across the country. And, and so uh, there's a very robust uh, uh, interaction, uh, but, but very strict and uh, uh, very uh, a, a strength of investigation or inspection is maybe the better word to, to make sure uh, if, if, at a zoo, if, if a zoo animal from, let's just say a zoo in California, uh, you can think of some big zoos in California, uh, bring their animals to, to Minnesota, which has happened um, uh, with the Hemker Zoo. Uh, that, that's uh, something they take very seriously, and that's the kind of standard we're talking here. Uh, if Ms. Hemker wants to add, add to that, I'm not trying to put her on the spot, but I'm trying to be a little careful because I know um, I, I just... I just don't want to say something more than maybe uh, I've found out through a lot of conversations. Ms. Hamburger, would you like to contribute? Um, I can add to that. Um, we are allowing people in central Minnesota the ability to see a rhino because of that, um, because we belong to the Species Survival Program um, with rhinos and we presently are the only zoo in the state of Minnesota with rhinos. So that's just one example of working with AZA zoos that have open doors for the public, for children in central Minnesota and all of Minnesota. Thank you, Ms. Hamker. Members, do we have any other questions or comments for Senator Westrom? Senator Rester, do you have any closing statements? Uh, no, Mr. Chair, uh, briefly, uh, thank you, committee, for your indulgence and uh, your interest in this. And uh, uh, I hope we can continue to work with this. Uh, Mr. Meyer and the DNR, uh, I uh, look forward to trying to work out any more concerns, but I, I appreciate their willingness to uh, look at this and see the, uh, see the need for it and, and, the, and the reasonableness to uh, try to work things out. And it, from, from our discussions, it sounds like uh, we, can, we can get there if there is any uh, tweaks or, or other changes that, that come, to, come to light as they look at this even a little bit more. Um, happy to work with them, but I would appreciate ultimately that we could keep it moving along in a bill, and uh, uh, that helps bring all parties together to, to uh, keep working on things that, that sometimes are close but, but not quite there. Thank you, Senator Westman, for the opportunity to have this discussion. I, I do want to state explicitly and proudly that the uh, Minnesota Senate Committee on Agriculture is pro-reindeer uh, and not afraid to stand up to Big Santa. Um, uh, and so this is something that I think we should continue talking to, about, and I'd like to encourage you, Senator Westrom, to keep your conversations going with our friends at the DNR. Uh, and if the two uh, can agree upon a thing, I think that we are probably in a pretty good space. Um, so uh, Senate file... Uh, 
4152 as amended will be laid over for possible inclusion. Thank you. Okay, Senator Putnam, you have the uh, Senate file 4225, and I believe we have the A3 amendment. Do you want to start with that, Senator? Uh, yes, please, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, this, what we have before us, is Senate file 4225, the Agriculture Policy Omnibus Bill. Uh, I would like to move the A3 amendment and uh, perhaps ask Ms. Painter to walk through it for us, if you would, please. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Chair, members, um, this is the Agriculture Policy Omnibus, <coughs> sections one through five, and also section 28 modifies provisions relating to compensation for damage caused by elk. This is from Senator Kupek, Senate File 4301. Section 28 repeals rules, and the language of the rules is incorporated into the statutes in these, in these sections of the bill. Section six is a chair's initiative that's prohibiting confidentiality clauses in agricultural production contracts, even for cooperatives. Sections seven through eight are from CUPEC Senate file 4391, seven to 11, amends provisions in the fertilizer, soil, amend soil amendment, and plant amendment chapter. Sections 12 to 16, are from Liskey's, Senator Liskey's Senate File 4500. Those sections modify provisions relating to food product sampling and demonstration at a farmer's market or community event. Section 17 is from Senator Gustafson's Senate File 4000. It extends the expiration of the Food Safety and Defense Task Force to June 20th, 2037. Section 18 is from Senator Putnam, Senate File 4011. It amends the definition of sustainable aviation fuel. Section 19 is from Senate File 4225 with the A1 amendment. And it modifies the time frame for allocating tax credits reserved for farmers. Sections 20 to 25 are from Kupet, Senator Kupek, Senate File 4302 with the oral amendment amending the grain indemnity provisions. Section 26 is the Eastray bill from Senator Liskey, uh, Senate file 3703, the first engrossment. Uh, section 27 is from Senator Kunesh's Senate file 3861. The bill was drafted as an appropriations bill, but the Department of Agriculture said they can absorb the cost, so it's been redrafted as a requirement for the commissioner to develop an anonymous way to report possible violations of the corporate and alien farm laws. Article two are technical changes and policy changes to the pesticide control policy chapter 18B. All of these, all of these sections came from the Department of Agriculture's bills. They were Senator Putnam's Senate file 4224 Senator Seberger's Senate File 4223 and Senator Kunish's Senate File 4542. Okay, thank you, Ms. Painter. Uh, discussions or questions on the A3 amendment? Sure. 
Senator West. Mr. Chair, um, uh, I guess Senator Putnam, did you want to talk through anything more specifically or what would be an appropriate time to start offering other amendments? And I don't want to jump to that before maybe there's some other discussion, Mr. Chair, but just any, any lay of the land would be just helpful so we can sure. work, work it out the best possible. Sure, Senator Westrom. I think what we'll do is if there's discussions or questions now, if not, we'll adopt the A3 and then we'll go to the consideration of amendments to the A3. Okay, so seeing no immediate questions or discussions. One, uh, one question, Mr. Chair. So, oh, sure. Go ahead, Senator Mr. Westrom. Mr. Chair, just Senator Putnam, uh, on this change of definition of sustainable aviation fuels, uh, just, just high level, what, what, uh, what are we changing there? What's the need for that change if, if there's a couple key, key things that we should be pointed to? Senator Putnam. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, Senator Westrom, uh, the, the main gist of that uh, definitional work was simply to come up with a more feedstock inclusive definition of what could be involved in sustainable aviation fuel. Senator Westrom. And Mr. Chair, Senator Putnam, is that something the department is, is bringing forward ultimately or is there some, some uh, groups, uh, either ethanol or biodiesel or other, other uh, commodity groups that are working on this just mm -hmm. If you're going to refresh my memory on any of that, that'd be helpful. Senator Putnam. Uh, Mr. Chair, Senator Westrom. Uh, yeah, this is something that uh, I think has some pretty wide uh, uh, support. Uh, I know that uh, some of our friends in those industries are in supportive of this change, but it was, in fact, an agency bill uh, that we discussed, I'm guessing, like a week, a week and a half ago with no opposition. Any other questions or discussion? All right. Uh, Senator Putnam, would you like to uh, move your amendment here? Yes, please, Mr. Chair. I'd like to move the A3 amendment, please. Okay, Senator Putnam moves the A3 amendment. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? A3 amendment is adopted. Any discussion or other amendments to the A3 amendment? Possibly. Uh, Mr. Chair? Yes. Uh, I would like Putnam. to move the A9 amendment, if I may, please. Okay. Senator Putnam uh, is going to move the A9 amendment. That has been passed out. So with that, uh, Senator Putnam, would you like to discuss the A9 amendment? Uh, Mr. Chair, this is a very simple change. It's kind of going back to something that was, uh, we're fixing something from, from last year a little bit, uh, uh, just about uh, some dairy law considerations. It's fairly explicit and very brief. Uh, and here at the request of our friends in the... Uh, okay. Uh, any, any discussion about the A9 amendment? Uh, Mr. Chair, if I may, I think sure. that our friends at MDA would like to come up and maybe tell us a little bit more about it too, if that's sure. okay. Sure, that'd be fine. Just uh, please identify yourself uh, for the record and then you can begin. Certainly, Senator Chair and members of the committee, my name is Chris McNulty. I am Deputy General Counsel for the Department of Agriculture. And um, this amendment actually corrects an oversight from last session where there was um, a few laws repealed um, due to an effort to uh, make uniform various uh, enfor enforcement mechanisms for the dairy industry that the department uh, has. And in the process, this privacy provision was inadvertently um, removed. And after discussion uh, with program administrators, it's been determined that it would be in the best interest um, that it be reinstated. The purpose of this provision, it's a privacy provision that protects uh, financial and production information that is gathered by the agency uh, through its enforce enforcement and oversight actions. And so it's something that the agency does rely on quite frequently. Um, when we receive requests through the Minnesota Government Data Practices Act, we cite this law um, to withhold information relating to production, financial information of um, members of the dairy industry in Minnesota. 
All right, thank you, Mr. McNulty. Uh, any other comments, questions about the A9 amendment? Seeing, seeing none, uh, all those in favor of the A9 amendment signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? A9 amendment is adopted. Any other amendments forthcoming? Senator Westrom. Mr. Chair, um, um, I've got a couple of, a few amendments, but uh, one, I'm just talking to staff here and uh, just maybe to lay, lay the groundwork. Um, I would like to um, bring the A2 amendment forward. However, I'm being uh, told that maybe there's a Couple things with the drafting that that don't line up as well as it should, and uh, Ms. Painter, I'll come to you afterwards, and you can clarify if I'm understanding this correctly or not. But Mr. Chair, and uh, Ms. Senator Putnam, just just to kind of make it as clear as possible, um, what I'm being told is it'd be easier if we just would reconsider the the bill that we just heard, which is the Hemker Zoo, as amended. Just bring that up for discussion, and then I would move to adopt that bill as amended into the omnibus bill um, because I think my understanding is that that bill would be uh, easier to adopt into the omnibus bill than the A2 amendment. And so, Ms. Painter, am I following what I'm understanding or being told correctly? Okay. Uh, I think if Senator Westrom and with the other members, if it's okay, I think to just draft things and get things in order, could we take a five-minute recess? Uh, and put things in order, and then we'll, we'll come back if, if members are amenable to that. Okay. Okay. And if that, that's helpful, that's, that's fine, Mr. That's Chair. what we need to do Thank just you. to help staff, I think, just get that in order. I think okay. that would be a good thing. All right. All right. With that, we are in uh, recess for approximately five minutes.
amendment. Uh, and we are taking, we look for any other amendments that may want to come to the A3. So Senator open Dames. For, you're open for an amendment? Yes. I'd like to offer the A7 amendment. Okay, Senator Dames offers the A7 amendment. Do we have copies of the A7? Okay, we're going to pass those out. While they're being passed out, Senator Dames, is there anything you want to say about it? Yes, the A7 amendment, what that would do is change some of the language on page, uh, page 11, line 16. It would uh, remove if the grain, and then there would be a period, and then it would eliminate uh, page 11, strike line 17, and then it would also strike, delete uh, lines 18, through 21. So what that would amount to is if a, if a elevator is buying grain by cash, it, this amendment would alleviate them from uh, all of the reporting requirements because they're buying it by cash, so there would be no reason probably to be doing all that reporting. Okay. Thank you, Senator Dames. Um, Further discussion of the A7 amendment also, is there anybody from the department that would also like to, to speak on the A7 amendment for some clarification? Hello. <laughs> Welcome back. You're going to just <laughs> state your name for the record and uh, give us your thoughts. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, my name is Nick Milanowski. I am the section manager for the fruit, vegetable, and grain program at the Minnesota Department of Agriculture. Um, in, in regards to the amendment, uh, this is a uh, this is an exemption for people that would uh, be filing cash or paying for grain in cash or cash equivalent. Currently, we have uh, roughly 13 entities in our program that qualify for the exemption under a million dollars. Um, and our opinion on this is uh, a neutral opinion. Good. Thank you, uh, Mr. Malikowski. Any Anything else? Uh, any other discussion on this from other members? It's not Senator Putnam, uh, your thoughts on the A7 amendment? Thank you, Mr. Chair. On conversations that I've had with our friends at MDA, my understanding is this impacts very, very few people, uh, and I see no particular issue with it. So I would uh, consider this a friendly amendment. Okay. Thank you. Any other discussion on the A7 amendment? Seeing none, all in favor of the A7 amendment signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? The A7 amendment is adopted. Senator Westrom. Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, I'd offer the A10 amendment and um, briefly to um, get it in the shape I'd like. Uh, Ms. Painter and I were reviewing it before committee and there's just a brief oral amendment. I'd uh, ask her to uh, speak to the committee with a few words that I'd like to have added and then we can, I'll, I'll discuss it further. Sure, we're, we're, I think we'll uh, pass out the amendment first, uh, and then we can talk about the oral amendment. On the, the overall amendment, uh, and Senator Westrom, would Mr. you like Mr. Chair, for efficiency, sure. I can just explain it first and then okay. let her That's explain the oral. Uh, sure, that'd be great. Um, what, what this amendment does is a, it's a modify, modification of the uh, co-op financial transparency, a bill that passed out of here unanimously a few weeks ago, uh, sitting in Judiciary Committee, uh, knowing that that's a longer... Uh, process and that they have a big backlog um, and, and members uh, so we want to look at these issues uh, on all sides and um, the idea is in this amendment is to just uh, have a task force that the Department of Ag uh, with the uh, staff and time they would have available uh, they tell me or indicate to me that they would be able to help pull a stakeholders meeting or meetings together to uh, hear from farmers as well as uh, cooperatives so they could look at this with a task force and bring back recommendations. The language is similar to what we uh, had in our Ag Bill a few years ago with the grain indemnity and, and uh, the grain indemnity uh, recommendations that they brought back to us as a committee. So it's intended to be a, a, a no cost but 
just a, a, a direction to the department, uh, let them look at this a little closer and then bring back recommendations to us next year so we can uh, dig into this a little bit more and, and have a little more uh, discussion from, from all the parties. So that's the idea. Um, the oral amendment would merely just add in the words or, that they bring back some recommendations to our committee. So I'd let, let Ms. Painter just specify exactly where that oral amendment would be added. Sure, thank you, Senator Westrom. Ms. Painter? Mr. Chair and members, that would be page one, line eight, after back, insert with recommendations. And Mr. Chair, um, I've shared this with the department. Uh, my understanding is they, they're, they're, they have no concerns and uh, if you want to hear from them, I think you could, but that's as long as I think I'm refl accurately reflecting uh, their position. All right. So what we will do first is we will adopt the, the oral amendment and then we will go to the underlying amendment. So uh, all those in favor of the oral amendment signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Seeing none, the oral amendment is adopted. So we are now on the A-10 amendment as amended. Thank you. Any... Uh, oh, I'm for, sorry, Mr. Chair. I was going to offer that our friends at MDA would be willing to have a, an opinion on this as well. Sure. Absolutely, Senator Putnam. So... Hello, Commissioner. Mr. Mr. Chair, uh, members, uh, Tom Peterson, Commissioner, of Minnesota Department of Agriculture, and, uh, and appreciate working with Senator Westrom on this, and appreciate the work that he did because there's key things in this, like work group is different than a task force, so then we can kind of, you know, pick who would want to be on something like this. Uh, it helps us, and we'd try to be as fair as possible. If anybody wants to be on it, and uh, Senator and staff, we'll make sure we invite you. Uh, if this makes it all the way through. And then report back. I was excited about that. Now we added with recommendations. So that makes it a little harder. But, uh, you know, I think it's something we can uh, talk to a few stakeholders. We had uh, uh, people come back with us, and it is something that the uh, agency feels that we can do. Uh, and so I appreciate Senator working with us on this. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Commissioner. Senator Putnam, any thoughts on your behalf? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you, Senator Western, for the amendment. Uh, given uh, our friend Commissioner Peterson's um, uh, encouragement, I, I would consider this a friendly amendment. Okay, thank you. And, and I would just also like to, to comment, obviously, because the grain indemnity bill is, is something that I've worked on, and I know we have uh, talked a lot about, you know, exactly some of the, the financial sides around what still needs to be there and what does not need to be, and the financial reporting of some of the elevators. So I appreciate also... Uh, bringing this forward to have a discussion about it. I think it's a really good way to go forward. So thank you, Senator Westrom. Senator Kunish. And sorry to speak after um, the uh, or after the chair, but is there a cost to this? If it's a, gr a group, does the department just absorb it? Or um, down the road, are we going to find out that there's, there's an amount that this has to go toward? Commissioner Peterson. Uh, Mr. Chairman and Senator Kunish, that's always a good question, and that's why I said, like, we don't have to appoint, you know, we would just absorb the cost of uh, convening a couple of meetings. I would say when we add in the word recommendations, you know, then somebody, we have to have some staff time of uh, somebody has to write that, you know, up. So, you, you know, if there's no money attached to it, you get the recommendations uh, in the form where somebody wasn't paid to write it up as much as we, we as we have, if we, for example, some task forces sometimes we put fifty thousand dollars towards them, and then we have a staff person that really digs in. But in this case, we're you know we see like who's the best person has some time and energy to put into this, you know, and we try to manage our staff's time as best as possible. So th there is a cost, but it's it would be negligible, you know, or, or a small amount, you know, I, we think that we can absorb. So thanks, and I appreciate that question. Just And then hey, just Senator one Kunish. more question. As a work group, does it have to, does this, does this have to go through state government finance? Mr. Peterson. I, uh, Mr. Chair, I'd ask the council. Sure, council. 
Mr. Chair and Senator Kunish, no, because it's not involving legislators. We're just ask, we're asking the commissioner to do something. It does not need to go to the state and local government committee. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Any further discussion on the A10 amendment as amended? Seeing none, all those in favor of the A10 amendment as amended signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? The A10 as amended is adopted. Mr. Chair. Senator Westrom. Mr. Chair, um, I would move the A11 amendment. Uh, and if uh, staff wants to pass that out, uh, that's the an updated uh, amendment dealing with the Hemker Zoo situation we just talked about earlier, uh, making, making some technical fixes uh, and that Mr. Meyer had commented about as well as uh, working with staff. So um, if they want to hand that out, Mr. Chair, I'd uh, move the A11 and uh, ask members to uh, support this amendment and uh, trying to uh, help remedy the situation uh, with the Hemker Zoo and Mr. Chair uh, and Mr. Mr. Chair and Mr. Chair, uh, talking uh, with Mr. Meyer in the back as he presented, uh, they would like to continue to talk and work on this. Uh, we, we believe this language uh, works with what Mr. Meyer had brought forward, but also commitment to keep working on this and talking uh, this over. If there's some other tweaks or things to uh, modify or adjust, uh, that's that's what I'm committed to do with. Mr. Meyer and the DNR and uh, others, uh, as this would move forward if, if, if that need arises. Senator Putnam, would you, uh, would you like to also call uh, Mr. Meyer back up to the stand to, uh, to hear his thoughts on this? Or? I would if I could, please, Mr. Okay. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Meyer, and two of you just identify yourself just clearly again for the record, that'd be great. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. For the record, Bob Meyer, Assistant Commissioner, Department of Natural Resources. Um, just kind of looking this amendment over for the second time here real quick. Sure, yeah, sure, take a second. So, Mr. Chairman, the amendment does uh, correct of uh, some confusion that was in the last language dealing with the, f the previous exemption and how this would tie into it. I still need some time to go back and, and talk with uh, some of our staff about this. It, it's moving in the right direction once again. Anything, and then I need to confer with the Humane Society of the United States as well to make sure that what we're doing, and the Board of Animal Health, I should say, to make sure what we're doing here um, doesn't cause any problems. But I, I appreciate the language and, and we're willing, to, more than happy to work with Chairman Putnam and, and the committee on this issue as it moves forward. Thank you, Mr. Meyer. Uh, other, Senator Putnam. Mr. Chair, I'm not sure if I'm allowed to do this, but can I ask a question of my neighbor here? I believe you can do that. Okay. Sure. Uh, Mr. Meyer, uh, Commissioner Meyer, um, uh, the language that we have here that you think still needs to be worked on, um, are you able to give the committee an idea of uh, your instinct, perhaps, to speculate on the amount of additional work that would be required. Is this um, almost there, uh, already there, going to take a while to get there? Mr. Meyer? Mr. Chair, Mr. Chair, uh, I prefer a scale of 1 to 10, maybe. Um, no, sure. but it's, it's probably a 6 right now. we got a little bit of ways to go. The, the, the question in my mind right now is allowable risk and making sure accreditation, accreditation and the source of those animals match the allowable risk that the state is willing to take on this issue. Um, it's very serious and I appreciate the support and the conversations we've had over the years on chronic wasting disease, protecting the wild herd, also working with the deer farmers and elk producers as well. So there's a lot of different facets to take into consideration on this. I completely understand uh, the concern of Senator Westrom and his constituents and that's been that zoo. So trying to create some kind of possibility for them to expand the genetics of their, of their population while also maintaining or trying to mitigate that risk of the unknown. 
as we all know here, it's it's more of a art sometimes than a science. And I just I will do my best to get back to you before this gets to the floor if this goes on and, and make sure that what what we're doing is right. Senator Putnam, uh, Mr. Chair, if I may, um, uh, given uh, Commissioner Myers. Um, uh, narrative and his interpretation of the situation. Uh, I will say that I am comfortable with this amendment to an extent. Uh, that is, um, I'm comfortable voting it on and into our uh, omnibus bill as long as there is full acknowledgement that significant additional work is necessary and there is no guarantee that the final thing will be in the final thing. Uh, just in, in total transparency. Uh, it sounds like we're moving in the right direction. I want us to get there. But I also want us to keep working, and I want us to be aware of the fact that if we don't get there, we don't get there. That being said, I do support uh, the amendment. Thank you, Senator Putnam. Other members, Senator Anderson. Thank you, uh, Mr. Meyer. Uh, this, my understanding from what Ms. Hempker had said earlier is that they were looking to be able to bring in from the state of Washington reindeer to put into their zoo. Now. For the last 10 years in Buffalo for a activity surrounding Snowfest or whatever they wanted to call it, I can't remember the name of it, but they br brought reindeer to Buffalo and they've pulled people around in there. And I'm wondering what the difference is be between having reindeer locally uh, I think it was in, they come from Carver County, uh, versus having reindeer in a zoo. What's the difference between those two? Mr. Meyer. Mr. Chairman, Senator Anderson, great question. Um, those animals that have been brought for um, exhibit participation, the rides, are animals that are live within the state of Minnesota. The big concern we have are importing animals, and you'll see in the beginning of this amendment, lines 1.16 to 1.19, Live survey from a state or province where chronic wasting disease has been detected or in the wild population within the past five years are not allowed to be brought into the state. So it's bringing animals in from other areas of other states is our concern and making sure that it's from an area that is not infested. It would be from a zoo or a facility that doesn't have a history of disease following proper management procedures. So it's that importation from animals from other places is our concern into the state, not animals that are currently housed within the state. So, Mr. Chair. Senator Anderson. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Meyer. How, um, looking at line 1.17 and 1.18 where it says the United States Department of Agriculture, how do you, how do you interact between federal and state uh, guidelines where they have, from a federal level, have allowed a particular species such as reindeer to be in Washington and also in Minnesota. And yet, this here sounds like if they've been licensed exhibitor or regula regulatory, regulated animal in both of those states, Washington or whatever states you want to pick, and Minnesota, I mean, you've got a federal standard that I would think is, unless your standard's higher than theirs is, I would think that that would oversee that. Can you explain that difference? Mr. Meyer. Mr. Chairman, Senator Anderson, I do not have the accreditation requirements of the USDA, but we can certainly get those. We have an MOU with the USDA right now working with our, our uh, deer, farm import or deer farm inspection program and working with them closely on, on their records and things that they would need to do on our end. So we work very closely together, and I, I will get information on that for you. But I don't know what licensed exhibitor means um, right off the top of my head. So I can get that information, compare those standards to what other standards are, and, and answer your question at that point in time. Thank you. Any other members' questions, comments? If not, um, Let's go ahead and uh, we will uh, go and they move the A11 amendment. Uh, all those in favor of the A11 amendment signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? The A11 amendment is adopted. Are there any other amendments? Senator Westrom. Um, 
Mr. Chair, unless if there's any other amendments, I'm happy to defer and not uh, do, do too many in a row. But otherwise, I have uh, one more amendment uh, that we would like to offer, uh, the A6 amendment. Okay. Senator Westrom offers the A6 amendment. And while that is being passed out, would you like to uh, describe the A6 amendment? Mr. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, members, uh, this, uh, this amendment uh, is somewhat similar to the bill that we had earlier uh, heard in this committee laid over, um, uh, referring to labeling for uh, cell-cultured meats as well as uh, insect proteins, um, making sure they're labeled in Minnesota as well as uh, um, designated for consumers in separate spots in the grocery store or prepared uh, it's separate separately, at least not commingled uh, in restaurants and, and labeled uh, appropriately on menus so people uh, can read that and know what they're ordering when they are um, or in the grocery store. Listening to some of the concerns from the committee when we heard it earlier, uh, some of the uh, efforts to keep them separate or in separate spots in the grocery stores seem to be a little uh, concern or a bigger concern of, of some members. And so this language pairs that down quite a bit in the subdivisions uh, four and five that would uh, still allow them or require that they uh, label them and uh, designate uh, those types of products that, that are either made from cell cultured, uh, cell, that are made cell cultured meats or, or proteins from insects or, or other food, food that's made up from insects like cricket flour, et cetera. <coughs> but it would um, allow the entities that, to use their existing facilities so they would just not be able to commingle them mix it together when they're, they're cooking it, but uh, to the extent practicable, uh, they would just keep them separate. They don't have to designate a separate spot in the store or, or things like that. And so tried to moderate that in response to the committee, as well as, <coughs> excuse me, um, as well as um, just, just having labeling that would be f uh, obvious to consumers uh, so they could they just know when they're buying uh, one of those products. That might be what you're, you're looking for, and, and uh, that's fine. Just, just make sure it's labeled in our stores and, and restaurants uh, across the state of Minnesota. And so I would uh, urge your support uh, that we would be able to pass this labeling uh, language uh, uh, trimmed down from the original bill. I also took the beginning off uh, GROSS, Gross Act, uh, so we aren't calling that in statute and uh, can refer to it however we want as, as it moves forward, but it, it does achieve the labeling uh, that I think is quite important for consumers and they'd be most interested in. Thank you, Senator Westrom. Senator Putnam. Thank you, amendment. Mr. Chair, and thank you, Senator Westrom, for this amendment and for the work that you've done on this since the first time we heard it. Um, I do gotta say in terms of uh, uh, sort of my rationale for my decision on this, uh, the Hemker Zoo uh, information that we just heard, there's a sense of urgency to that because they have an immediate concern and immediate need. I do not see a similar sense of urgency with this bill uh, in that it seems like we're dealing with a potential future issue, but not one that is directly in front of us. And who knows how things are gonna change uh, before it does become something that's more concerning to us. And so for that reason, members, I would urge a no vote on this amendment. Senator Putnam, other members? Senator Kunish. <clears throat> now I'll just follow up on that. Um, I, d I did a little bit of research on this because it really piqued my interest and <clears throat> I learned that there is currently no food made from cultural animal cells available for sale in the United States market. Mm -hmm. So in essence, we're trying, we would be trying to le legislate or um, manage something that doesn't even exist. It's not there. And I don't know how we, you know, it does not make sense to me that we would put something in our law books, in our statutes about something that does not exist at all. Um, I also learned that um, 
they are they are they are being worked on and developed, but um, when those products come closer to the market, the FDA is really closely coordinating with the United States Department of Agriculture's Food Safety and Inspection Service, and so um, I think uh, what would be best is if we waited until these products actually came to the market and we could examine the packaging, and then if that packaging was not up to Minnesota standards, um, perhaps we would take it up then, but it just doesn't make sense to me that we would create statute and legislation on something that does not exist. Any other members? Mr. Chair. Senator Westrom. Mr. Chair, um, I guess uh, re respectfully, uh, I, I remember even some of our testimony different than what Senator Kunish uh, recalls or, or researched. Uh, uh, recall reading articles and uh, emails that I've received about uh, this is this is happening with salmon or fish uh, in other states. Um, some of that's being explored here in Minnesota in, in different conversations I've had. So uh, I, I'm not I'm not. Uh, aware that it's not happening anywhere. That's different than what I recall the testimony here as well as other things I've read and, and heard from uh, folks. Uh, some in the industry that that were concerned that the, the labeling went too far and, and we heard from some of those. And so uh, I think we should get ahead of this uh, on behalf of the consumers before it's it's here and then all of a sudden everybody uh, is fighting over, over uh, labeling because those that are in this marketplace all of a sudden feel like it's a change, a change in regulatory or change in requirements uh, after they've already been able to get into the market shelves. Uh, uh, if they're not here, then it's a good time to, to, to set it up so, so everybody complies. But I, uh, that's, that's not the information I have received and recall, but uh, either way, it's, it's at the be forefront in, in many places. And I just think that's the time uh, for us to get this done, and uh, um, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to uh, overuse the Department of Ag and Task Force, so I'm not going to ask for a task force on this, Senator Kunish. But uh, I do think it's something we should take a serious look at, and just making sure consumers know it. Uh, I even recall you talking in committee that day that that it sounds like there are places in Minneapolis that you can eat crickets. So I, I do think it's being done here, even in Minnesota, if I remember the testimony or the discussion we had correctly. But I, I stand corrected if, if I misunderstood that from when we talked. But Mr. I would just urge members to support this and um, try to try to get ahead of this labeling issue. Mr. Senator, Chair, if I may, uh, sure. and not just because I like it when everyone gets along, if I can kind of try and iron this out a little bit, is I think that we might be talking about a distinction between retail and served in a restaurant. Um, and that's, I think, a pretty important variable and one that we have yet to come to terms with or even begin to discuss. So to me, uh, this concern about um, the imminence of whether or not this uh, material will be available uh, in Minnesota, that's another thing that we haven't talked about yet, which uh, is, I think, further evidence of how we aren't ready to pass this bill right now. Senator Anderson. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, has the Department of Agriculture uh, weighed in on this issue? We will ask them. Commissioner yeah. Peterson. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Chair and members, uh, Tom Peterson, Commissioner of Agriculture. Um, uh, the department doesn't have a position on uh, on uh, on the labeling uh, bill uh, per se. Uh, you know, I think that we, in what we've talked about, it, we think the labeling, you know, it would be a good idea. It's just how to go about it, and still trying to you know gather information. And I do appreciate it. we were able to sit down and meet with Senator Westrom, but we, you know, and continue he. Uh, there was two bills. Senator Dreheim had a bill, and I know that our staff, our, our staff that worked on this, is not here at the moment. Uh, but I know they preferred, if we were going to do a bill, they preferred Senator Westrom's to 
um, uh, uh, Senator Dreheim's. But there are a few things uh, in the bill I just would highlight, you know, as we look at it. I would just say, like, we would need for sure to probably do some more work on this. It would be the um, uh, line 1.26 where it just uh, similar qualifying term or disclaimer approved by the commissioner. Um, and I just like that's not something we do. We'd have to work with the FDA on that, and I'm not sure. And again, we don't have our, our person there. And then subdivision five also deals with restaurants. We don't uh, label, and that that is done by the Department of Health. And so I just want to point that out. So it might lead to another uh, piece too as well. And so in in general, we don't have a position on the bill other than we would need to you know continue to work on it if the committee chose to move this forward. Thank you, Commissioner Peterson. Thank you. Uh, any other members? If, if not, I, I would also, if I could make a point here too. Uh, I, the, on that, in subdivision five to the line 2.17, uh, stored, cooked, prepared, separate from all other food or food products to the extent practical, practi uh, practicable, that's a hard word to say. It's going to be right up there with nurse anesthetist on my list of words that I cannot say. Uh, I guess it just that that always that word I guess practicable uh, is is always a little tough too for those. And also having known worked in like tiny little restaurants with tiny little grills and tiny little walk-in coolers, um, it's tough. But maybe that would not be practicable in that restaurant. And any other members with comments? Seeing none, uh, we will vote on the A6 amendment. Uh, all those in favor of the uh, A6 amendment signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? No. No. I am going, uh, well, I was going to call it a tie anyway, but would you like to do division? Sure. So uh, we'll do it. It's believe it's a show of hands, correct? All right. All those in, in favor? Four. You counting? I'm five, counting. Five, one, two, three, four. Five, okay. All those opposed? One, two, one, two three, three, four. four. Uh, it is a tie, so therefore the amendment fails. Any other amendments? Oh. Senator Putnam, final, any final comments here? Oh, I just want to say that thanks everyone for the, the conversation, not just today, but on these issues as we struggle with them for the past month or so that we've been discussing all these issues that have come before us before. So thanks for the conversation. And, and um, I guess, Mr. Chair, I move that Senate file 4225 as amended be recommended to pass and placed on general orders. We have one member who's coming in from another committee. We're just going to hold. Seat. In that case, I want to thank you all again uh, for the conversation and um, uh, take another moment to point out that this committee and this process has been deeply bipartisan. Uh, if we look at this list of initiatives and amendments and such that are all here, uh, it's clear that this is a product of all of us working together towards the greater good. And thanks for that. Yes. Uh, it's a sign of what we can do when we all work together. Sure, it is. And there's that. There's that. Thank you, Senator Putnam. It's about to do the weather forecast, but that's okay. <laughs> okay, we are uh, move. Then Senator Putnam moves the A3 amendment as amended. Uh, we adopted it. So I uh, guess we'll do. All those up to 4225 as amended. Uh, that's right. We go back to the original one. Uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? It is adopted. And with that, we have brought come to the conclusion of uh, this committee meeting.
We do have more. <laughs> Senator West. Mr. Chair, uh, Senator Putnam, uh, just given the deadline week, but do you have any uh, thoughts on next week or the soon thereafter? Uh, just, just any uh, meetings next week, perhaps? Sure, Senator Putnam, and just do it from there. Yeah, sure. Uh, Senator Westham, on Monday we will be dealing with the agriculture specific only concerns in the cannabis bill. Just that section. And I expect that we'll be have you prepared with a focus on those particular elements um, in time to get ready for it. It's also Women in Ag Day. So that's another great reason for us to come back on Monday. Um, uh, as of now, my understanding is that we do not plan to meet on Wednesday of next week. Um, happy early spring break. Uh, and you're welcome. Uh, but on Monday, we will be back to talk about the ag-specific uh, uh, elements of the cannabis bill and celebrate women in agriculture. I will uh, also, just as an, an aside, uh, if you're coming back for Monday, you might want to think, make sure you stay aware of travel plans for Sunday. Just had to work that in, because I'm probably coming back Saturday night. <laughs> when with that, this committee's adjourned.